A History of Performance in 20 Minutes, Lectures. Let's try a history of the body in art as a history of silence as opposed to discourse about art. Let's take performance out of its historical environment. Let's simply show how the history of art has, at a certain moment, and for some people, engendered gestures and not objects. And certainly not discourse. Mime artists showing, indicating, signaling. It's no longer time for speech, but time for action. So now, shut up. Keep it zipped. Don't say anything anymore. Don't read anything anymore. Everything is to be done, and yet nothing is to be done. Imagine if John Cage's four minutes, 33 seconds was not silence as an absolute form of music, but instead, I'm not copying anymore. Now I am showing. So the anti-conceptual attitude opposed discourse with silence. Enough chit chat. Don't use gesture alongside, alongside speech, but instead as a retort. Violence then, end of conversation. Body art and performance, the dumb face of art illiterate and dogged, autistic, the barons in the trees. Memories. It wasn't about going further or about provocation. It was a celebration of the present moment. Immediacy. Immediacy, literally no more mediation. Perhaps right there is where the greatest subversion lies. The last straw of art is to no longer have an object. Because no matter what, no matter what object rather than no object. The greatest subversion is not to leave a trace. It's you arrive too late, not even a mise-en-scene. A precarious gesture, instantaneous. It's nothing more to show already over. The culture of performance is what is not left over, even when you remember everything. Did it even happen? Not even sure. Looked at this way, in a purely formal fashion, the history of performance or of body art is not then a history of the representation of the body but exclusively a history of gesture, barely sketched, already expired. Let's try then a history of performance in 10 gestures and 30 figures. It could go like this, perhaps. First, inaugural gesture, appearing, simply being there. I don't hide behind my work anymore. So, this is me, straight like a capital I. Here I am, chin slightly raised, little smile, I am fine. I am affirming my positive subjectivity. Bob Morris, iBox, 1962. Or, perhaps, appearance again, Bruce Nauman. Enough talk, enough glows. Now I am going to show you something. First, space. Well, it's obvious. Start from the beginning again. Relearn the fundamental gestures. Here are the limits of my universe the universe of the artist. I can pace 
the square of my studio. It is voluntary confinement, but I resist. I walk, therefore I am. Appearance as simply being. Slow angle walk, Beckett walk, 1968. But watch out, to appear is also an immediately to become a potential target. So you need to move, otherwise someone might shoot at you. Second gesture then, receiving. On November 19th, 1971, Chris Burden stood up in a gallery in Santa Ana in California stood up in front of a gun, a movie camera, and a photographic camera. There is a shot. The bullet goes through his arm. Arg. Radical performance, the suicide gesture. Burden is thus immobile, determined. The outcome is inevitable. Shoot, 1971. Inescapable, it's... I don't fight. But the most disturbing is not that, maybe. Because with burden, it's anti-suspense. You say to yourself, perhaps he's not going to do it, but yes, he's capable. Finally, it's an exercise in virility. I fight against the pain, I am strong, the will to power and the superman. I shoot myself, but stay alive. Nietzschean. Chris Burden is health, and the worst thing is illness. The most disturbing, then, is not Chris Burden, it's Vito Acconci. The most shocking around those bullets, they are tennis balls. The artist receives them blindfolded, and he tries to catch them or avoid them. Blindfolded catching, 1970. With Burden, it's the firing squad. With Akanshi, it's torture. Mental and physical torture. The worst humiliation is a useless gesture. True danger lies in the invisible. The true enemy is invisible. Eyes blindfolded, Akanshi is paradoxically the most visionary. Eyes blindfolded, pitch black, so there was a night, there was a morning. Third gesture, holding back. Another strategy, resisting. A history of performance as an illustration of the relation of submission to exterior forces. But this resistance has its limits, always, those of the body. So this body which is holding back is taut, rigid, in combat. But this taut, rigid, combative body will never win. And its resistance will be heroic or grotesque. Heroic photograph of a body suspended above a void. That of Denis Oppenheim making a human bridge between two brick walls. Extended spread out, forming an angle with his body. Immediacy and the temptation of the void, drawn to the earth but resisting, taken just before falling, before foundering, at the moment of the greatest tension, rooted in loss but also in combat, leaning toward the abyss like a gargoyle. Parallel stress, 1970. But holding back is also, and particularly, holding back the voice, emblematic of our history, quiet on the set. Weak version, Cal Catalysis 4, 1970-71, Adrian Piper, walking down a road with a scarf in her mouth. Gag. 
primary, but perhaps not so weak, I offer up the violence of imposed silence. Or holding back again, radical and gory version by Paul McCarthy. Hot dog, 1974, stuffing sausages into the mouth until nausea. Something that won't go in and then cannot come out. Abject voluntary gesture. Paul holds the sausages in with a bandage around his head. So obviously made dumb by force. Odiously dumb. Is he swallowing or vomiting? It's the same thing. The sausage is indigestible. He is unmanageable. Indigestible and more literally unspewable. The stupefied public are taken hostage. If I vomit in front of him, he will vomit too and choke. So the supreme irony of the situation is that McCarthy is taking advantage of this in order to reconcile the negative critics with the enthusiasts of the trashy performances. As a France Dimanche journalist complained in February, in February 1975 on the subject of body art, they called that art, it makes me throw up, precisely. No transition, fourth gesture, escaping. Escape, run, get away, steal away, you're back to history. The best defense, dumb always. Escape in order not to have to explain, in order not to have to speak, just run. Roadrunner and Willie Coyote in the desert. Roadrunner's version, optimism, I liberate myself, a breath of life, come out of the canvas to breathe oxygen. Founding an emblematic gesture by Saburo Murakami as early as 1956, breaking through many paper screens. I tear everything in my way, nothing can stop me, I am roadrunner. I traverse, I cross mountains, I get away, breathing. At the end of the tunnel, life. Simplified athletics challenge, the 200 meters through the hurdles. As easy as picking my nose. The other side of the coin, Willie Coyote's version, 40 years later, asthmatic and suicidal, absurd, desperate, and to sum it up, Californian by Barry Leva. Velocity Peace, 1970. I throw myself at the wall until I'm exhausted. Or to be more precise, I don't push against the wall, I escape. But it is impossible to escape. A magnificent and upsetting fiasco, like a claustrophobic swallow in a stable of la dute or a fly, I bash against the window. Stop. But in fact, all of that is conscious and sublime to the very limits of my body, a weakening coming and going. Sisyphus demonstrates the impossibility of perpetual motion because a man tires, damages himself, gets hurt, traces of blood, no possible way out. or perhaps a way out by a fifth gesture, aiming, new position, threatening. No further recourse is possible. As if in the 1960s, art had gotten through the gates, past the century, diplomatic procedures exhausted. Now we shoot. Swinging 60s blow out with Niki de Saint-Fal. 
I am firing at tubes of paint, concentrating on the target, point and shoot. Calamity Jane. This posture is strong, virile, clear. More than the pseudo-subversive action of pictorial murder, it is the form of the gesture which is important. Portrait of the artist as a killer. Turn the situation around, vengeance. The painter adopts the pose of a Napoleonic soldier, Napoleonic soldier in Goya's tableau. Ready, aim, fire. But just a few years later, Chris Burden again rewrites a desperate version of the scene. Inaccurate, ridiculous. I shoot at a Boeing 747, 747 in flight. Certainly, it's not dangerous. It might be more romantic. But potentially, an aeroplane is the target. So you don't really believe in it, and yet, why not? This is subversion as disobedience to parental instructions. You don't aim, not even for fun. An attack? More like take off forbidden, obligation to land. Burden brings it all back to the ground, breaking the wings of planes. Literally, I am bringing you down. So go on, everybody hits the ground, flatten your face, hands behind your head. Talking about getting down, sixth gesture, falling, inaugural gesture, Yves Klein, 1960, le saut dans le vide, leap into the void. Yves throws himself into the air from the outside wall of a bourgeois house in the Parisian suburbs. But I don't fall, I take off. Camera trickery, sure, but what a result, I fly. Erection, Icarus, head in the cloud, drawn toward the ether, in the sky, a negation of the body's weight, is the flight of the annunciating angel, or better, the ascension on his way to immateriality. Anyway, grotesque and pathetic variation by Bas Jan Adder, the fall guy. Fall 2, 1970. I'm cycling around along a canal in Amsterdam, and I throw myself into the water. Splash. It's hardly voluntary, it's undemonstrative, passive. It's more of an accident, of casting. Nobody's fault, hardly his. Well, he's not even hurt, just ill-adapted to the world. Social suicide. Cry him a river of no return as touching as a bottle in the sea. Besides, it was a premonition. Adder passed away in a tragic manner many years later, drowned at sea. Bequeathed his life to it, perhaps. But there, this pitiful form from the bike that is still comedy, discreetly burlesque, quietly sad. Fall? But don't worry, not everything is so quiet. New gesture, crying, sobbing, screaming. New gesture, dumb. Paradoxical? Not really. A cry is not discourse. A cry is expression, noise. It's not language. So after centuries of visual and then textual discourse in art, the cry is an affirmation of the end of discourse. We have already moved on to something else, or returned to something else. A simple cry, just that, alone, primal, a return to the essence of art. I cry, after that comes language, the end of childhood. So, in the world of conceptual murmurs, Several howls echo and call out to each other. Jochen, Marina, Bill. One, soprano Johann Gertz to cry until exhaustion, 1972. In a vacant lot, I cry out hello until my voice breaks. Prayer, shamanism, howling at the moon. 
Two, head down version, Marina Abramovic, 1975, freeing the voice. To cry is to resist, a near chance. Experimenting with the body's limit, the result, an almost feral bel canto, like a row, a wide musical, east side story. Marina, I just met a girl called Marina. Three, Bill Viola, The Space Between the Teeth, 1976, an oral version of the cry, organic, traveling shot, an open mouth which cries out. The camera enters the mouth like the lion tamer with his head in the lion mouth, and of cry, cut. You only need the jaw to close, to bite. Eight, gesture. To bite, cut, slice. Another possible scenario in the history of performance, cannibalistic version. Not to eat, mind you, nor to swallow, but more in order to leave a mark. We will always oppose the silence of the gesture to discourse, but this time with a bias. Rediscover a basic form of writing. Because, etymologically, the Greek word for writing Graphene means to engrave. Right from the start, writing was not about constricting, but penetrating. So, like the scream is a primeval language, a bite is the first form of writing. So, after the silent expression of the scream, here is the illegible imprint of the bind wood. Therefore, leave marks, trademarks, video account she 1970, methodical bites onto the body until all possible areas have been bitten. Ambitious writing, that we could say biting. Internal rotative printing, break level, grease, font side 70, possible burying, ready for press, dispatch, curved, squared, glued spine. Now just leave it to dry, deliver it to one place in New York. Printing, still, a version with binding and stitching. Gina Pane, Action Sentimentale, Sentimental Action, 1972. Sat down, crossed leg on the floor. I stick rose thorns into my extended forearm. I am a sculpture. I am the tree trunk of popular festivals. With each nail planted, I make a wish. It's not really masochistic, but rather a solitary game. It's more welcoming. The body as a fertile ground, transplant territory, fusion of organs possible, undesirable. More persistent bike, Nam Jun Pek slices his arm with a razor blade. 1967. The gesture is simple, basic, has no affect, a pre roll experiment, applied and absurd, an arm version of Arakiri, small arms version, because within the Adams family of reflexive biters, the Weatherblad school, the most committed remains the Austrian, Gunther Bruce. Cyrus Probe, Laceration Test, 1970. It's the end of Viennese actionism, the last pathetic parade. Tragic self-bullying in Vienna, one dead, or almost. Bruce, on his knees, in torn garter belt and mutilated body, slices his scalp calmly with a razor and drinks his own urine from a glass. It's the end. It's man alone who ends up tearing himself apart with strings attached to his ankles. We cannot do anything for him. Vladimir Jankelevich's death is the present event. Final curtain. <laughs> to recap, appearing, 
receiving, holding back, escaping, aiming, falling, crying, biting. But yet another new gesture, emptying oneself. Empty oneself, free supply, two options to choose from, generous or pathetic, losing or giving, the giving of nourishment or the pure loss of self. Sometimes it's difficult to distinguish between them. My body as a source of life or of trouble. I have a gift to you or I let go of myself. In any case, this round is on me. So, I'm thinking oneself in a joyous way. Bruce Nauman, Self Portrait as a Fontaine, 1966-67. The artist spewing water like a fountain, generous, nourishing, a life source. Silence always. You can't speak when your mouth is full. It's a simple gesture, at once ironic and voluntary. The maximum effect with the minimum of effects. When the artist is happy, that's what it does. It makes me think of that quote from Quote Twitters. Every time an artist spits, it is art. I'm thinking oneself, scatological version. Otto Mule, Peace Action, 1968. I'm thinking yourself into another's mouth. An SNM, a sadomasochistic version of the gift. Golden shower in Munich. Welcome to the theater of the cruelty. Don't hold back, let the peace flow, overflow, water sport. And from there, de facto, the tap is open. Everything can happily flow. You could write a history of performance like a synthesis of fluid dynamics. A few random examples. The flaneur version. Francis, Alice, pouring paint from a pot with a hole in it and walking the street of Sao Paulo, 1995. Fine blue line on gray pavement, maximum traceability. More, Hannah Wilke, his first epistle, 1978. Naked urination, standing into the toilet bowl. But not that vulnerable, there's a pistol in her hand. Less naturalistic provocation than visual affirmation of sexual equality in violence. Or, here is another one, Carolee Schneemann, Interior Scroll, 1975. I empty my body via the vagina while unrolling a parchment. You might call it a fusion of the Bible with Gustave Corbett. The word is the origin of the world. And the final version, Mike Kelly, manipulating mass-produced idealized object, 1990. Mission? Cheating on cuddly toys, maximum subversion. You forget yourself, literally. Return of the repressed, as is still ready-made, ready-merde. Pick up your own regression, e.g. stained teddy bear. Toy Story, option massacre game. Good night, children. Do you want me to tell you the story of the bear and the rabbit? No, thank you, it's okay. Tenth and final gesture in this history of the body in art, the opposite of the first gesture, the opposite of appearing, not appearing. Using the body to signify absence, in short, to disappear. So, disappearing. December 22nd to 24th, 1971. Chris Burden disappearing for three days without leaving a trace. Impossible to locate him. Radical. The scandal of the absent gaze. 
no more spectator, so no more picture. It is not even the absence of trace anymore, nor the trace of absence. It is the impossible trace. An anti-cognitive revolution, it's you won't know anything about it. Burden had already experimented with this concept by hiding inside a gallery during an exhibition. Move along, nothing to see. But this, this is the ultimate in radical dematerialization. I disappear. It's as if performance might have always tended toward this point, finally. Simply out, out of the artistic field. Tabula rasa, dematerialization, accomplished, fade away. or come back, but then, having disposed of the body and the gesture, the end of performance, in that case, come back, back to square one, the two Swiss artists, Fischli and Weiss, putting the oil on the fire, Der Lauf der Dinge, The Course of Thing, 1987, on 50 minutes to tell you that art is dynamite, a series of claustrophobic events that set out each other off like falling dominoes. Return of the object of sculpture, but in a body art without the body version. Puppet. The rebirth of the happening option of bachelor and desiring machines. The entire history of performance we played with hardware and mechanics. Fluxus in a Home Depot kind of a way. The machine has started up again, and the history continues without us on its own. Rolls credits, the end. Thank you. <laughs>